Oh yeah, check out those nice curves. That's right, those nice spinal curves. This is your spine. From the front, you can see it's straight, but from the side, you'll see curves, kind of like an elongated S. These curves are crucial for maintaining spinal health throughout your life. Think of your spine as a spring, alternating from curve to curve. When you walk or run or twerk, there's contact with the ground. You're hitting or pushing off it with your weight and pressure. This creates force, which your spine is able to then disperse. This is necessary for body posture and balance, but also important if you don't want that force impacting your brain. So the spine or vertebral column is part of the larger axial skeleton. It houses the spinal cord, which is a key structure of the central nervous system, and has 33 individual vertebrae, 24 of which are separated by intervertebral discs. These allow slight movement of the vertebrae and act as shock absorbers. Now, as you can see, there are four curves in the spine. You're probably most aware of the lumbar curve, the thoracic curve, and the cervical curve, as these are the most frequently referred to by doctors and physical therapists. But there's also the sacral curve way down here. Of these four curves, you can see that both the cervical and lumbar curves are shaped inwards, called lordotic curves, while the thoracic and sacral curves are shaped outwards, or kyphotic curves. These can be classified as primary and secondary curves. But why the distinction? Well, for primary curves, you've had them since birth. Not the case for secondary curves, however, these actually develop later on. This means, yes, at one point in your life, you are missing two curves. You weren't an S, you were a C. So the primary curves form during the fetal development. You can see that the C shape is actually well suited to the cramped conditions of the womb. The sacral curve helps to support the abdominal organs, while the thoracic curve, which connects or articulates with the ribcage, accommodates and protects your lungs and heart. As an infant, when you curl into the fetal position, that's indeed the natural position of your spine. You don't yet have the muscle strength to hold your head up. Now things are about to change because the next few months of life sees you interacting with the world around you. It's a curious time, turning in the direction of noise or light that catches your attention, talking to giant people. This requires the lifting and movement of the head, which in turn leads to the development of a secondary curve in the upper spine, the cervical curve. This curve is in the opposite direction of the primary curve, so it takes a bit for it to develop. As you start to creep and crawl, the secondary curve of the lower spine now starts to form. This is the lumbar curve between the rib cage and the pelvis. This is the final curve to develop and is responsible for that arch in the lower back, from a C to an S. As you start to walk, this all gets strengthened. Now, back to the fully formed spine. You may have noticed the posture of some people, and this could be you too, to be rather exaggerated, whether due to lordotic curves or kyphotic curves. The successive or abnormal spine curvature can be caused by poor posture or spinal diseases. With lordosis, specifically in the lumbar region, there can be a sway back appearance. A person may also look like they're sticking their stomachs out or their butts out. This curvature has been reported more so for women than for men, with it being especially common during pregnancy. Dancers are known to suffer from this too, due to the constant strain they put on their backs. Usually for most people though, these conditions are the result of poor posture, and so are reversible by learning the correct posture and by doing appropriate exercises. Other names for this include hollow back and saddle back, named after a similar condition that affects horses. With kyphosis, specifically in the thoracic region, there is a humpback appearance, or dowager's hump, where a person may look like they're hunching or slouching over. A normal thoracic curve should have a slight kyphotic angle ranging from 20 to 50 degrees. But if it gets past 50, you're going humpback. This time, the curvature is more frequently seen in males than in females, although there's a marked increase for older women as they're more likely to suffer from osteoporosis. Other common names for this include roundback and Kelso's hunchback. In addition to lordosis and kyphosis, there's also scoliosis, which I'm sure you've heard of. It's the lateral or sideways curving of the spine. This is actually the most common abnormal curvature occurring in about 3% of the population. It's more common among females. What would happen now if we considered the opposite condition? What if you had little to no curves in your spine? What if you're a flatback? Well, the loss of normal lordosis and kyphosis would be harmful. With such a flat spine, you would have terrible difficulty even standing up straight. Okay, consider the African apes, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, 
they have an inability to curve their lumbar spines due to only having three or four lumbar vertebrae as opposed to the five in humans. There's a limited range of motion forcing them to stoop forward awkwardly as they move and walk. This would be similar for the case of flat backed humans. You'd always have a sensation of falling forward. You'd have chronic back pain with massive spinal degeneration. Daily activities would be a constant struggle. You'd suffer from extreme fatigue. You'd likely need a cane or walker to assist you in walking as your weight wouldn't be centered over your pelvis and legs. Basically, life would suck. So it's unfortunate then that this is in fact a real condition that some people suffer from, albeit to varying degrees. It's called flat back syndrome and can be caused by disorders such as arthritis and from certain spinal surgeries. Fortunately for the majority of us, we have the strength and flexibility from the normal curves in our spine. If quadrupeds, which are animals with four limbs or feet, were to have our S curve instead of their normal singular curve, it would be debilitating for them. Their backs and hips would be in constant strain. But as humans, this spinal construction affords a balanced inline structure for our unique upright posture as in we're the only creatures on this planet with such a spine. I guess you can say that when it comes down to it, us humans are indeed the curviest animals of all. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed this topic, and if you've ever had problems with your spine, lordosis, kyphosis, scoliosis, flat back, anything, tell us about it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, share it, and if you want to learn more about the unique human spine, you can go ahead and check out the Ken Hub website. All right guys, I'll see you next time.